Our first story today examines the booming pastured egg sector. Australian state governments have agreed that the classification free range will allow up to 10,000 hens to the hectare. But it's left a lot of smaller egg producers out in the cold. So a growing number are going further than free range by making sure their chickens always have fresh pasture. South Australian based reporter Prue Adams reports on the battle over the term free range and the trend towards pastured eggs. Farming doesn't get much more idyllic than this. Pre dawn at Balmy Byron Bay. And the chooks are about to be let out of their purpose built caravan to spend another day pecking on pasture. There's nothing better than seeing 350 ISA browns running around on fresh green pasture. Um, they're beside themselves, they, you know, they're that happy. Um, so, to showcase to the consumer and, and all our customers that come on site, uh, we were never going to do anything else other than raise our chickens on pasture. Two thousand kilometres south, on the other side of a slice of water called Backstairs Passage, you come to Kangaroo Island. Here, Graham and Kathy Barrett are doing the daily egg collection from their homemade mobile chook house. They run chickens in rotation with beef cattle and prime lamb. Chooks are actually very hard on pasture, they, they overgraze it very quickly, so that's why we keep moving the sheds around. The chooks like it short, so we keep graze it down with the cattle or the sheep, and then the chooks follow behind. Back again on the mainland, at Keith, near the SA Vic border, another egg enterprise with a similar approach. Here, Bill Hood is doing his regular Monday morning move pulling the chook caravan along another 25 metres to put the hens in lusher loosen. Across the country, from Margaret River in the west to Atherton in the north, there are now hundreds of these small-scale, free-range egg farms that rely on mobile housing so chickens can always have fresh green feed. Those who farm this way say the eggs are more than just free range. Increasingly, they're referring to their product as pastured or pasture raised eggs. As we learnt more about pastured poultry and the benefit for land and all of those types of things, it was an absolute no brainer. That's where we wanted to go. Pastured egg production means that the hens are raised outdoors that they have free and open access to the paddocks and most importantly that they are at stocking densities that always allow for access to forage and grazing. So by that I mean that there's always pasture on the ground, that the pasture is managed so that it's not a dirt lot, that the hens are out there and they can actually eat the grass. Yeah. And obviously they love it. Small-scale pastured product has become such a thing that Queensland-based Lee McCosker has built a business around it. An animal welfare specialist and pig farmer, she has her own licensing and accreditation company called PROOF, an acronym for Pasture Raised on Open Fields. PROOF is an organisation that supports farmers that are producing their livestock in under pastured conditions as opposed to just free range. They actually um, farm their, their animals in a much more old-fashioned type of um, system where the animals actually do range outside, usually in mobile systems in paddock rotations. Mainly in the... In the <laughs> Hello girls. There are 20 members of Proof nationally, half of them egg producers, the other half growing out pastured pork. <coughs> members pay a licensing fee and have to stick to a stringent code of conduct with regards to animal welfare. They're subject to short notice audits and can access training and advice. 
The operations manager at the farm, Byron Bay, Johnson Hunter, is debating whether to sign up. Yeah, we, we're going to consider par partnering with Lee. Um, I think it's a perfect example for her to showcase what the proof standards are here. Um, we're going to talk to her and see, see what we can do together. Um, but it's just awesome for people like her to be able to put a standard out there that is tangible for the consumer to research and, and then they make the choice about what, 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 what egg or, or meat product they want. The Byron Bay Farm is a showcase for small-scale animal and food production, which they say is ethical and sustainable. With thousands of visitors every year and a cafe on site, there is a ready market for their pastured free-range eggs. It's an expensive and labour-intensive way to farm. Some producers have to roll out temporary electric fencing before they move their chicken houses each week. The egg collection is not automated as it is in the large-scale commercial sheds. And fewer eggs are collected, partly because the chickens sometimes lay away from their boxes, but also because inconsistent weather and the threat of predators can lower the lay rate. Adding to the expense, in many cases, Maremma guardian dogs are employed to protect the free-roaming hens. Yeah, we'd have three main problems here is the, the, the wedge-tail eagles, the feral cats and then the crows get a bit smart for us every now and then too. And we wouldn't be doing it without the marimba dogs. You no. have to have dogs and good fences to keep the chooks closer for the dogs to actually look after them. They're an extraordinary animal. Obviously we couldn't do what we do without them uh, with no fences or nothing. We've got foxes here and eagles and the dogs do a very good job of dealing with that. Eggs farmed this way are up to four times the price of caged chicken eggs, retailing at between six and twelve dollars a dozen. But according to the producers Landline spoke with, there is still an insatiable demand. We can't meet the demand at present. We cannot supply enough. And has that always been the case? Yes. We've never advertised anywhere. It's always just word of mouth that spread our markets and. We just can't keep up. We have a waiting list. Graham and Cathy Barrett were among the first to operate a free-range egg business with movable chook houses. Back in 1999, when they started, there wasn't much information around and there certainly weren't any prefabricated mobile units. So Graham made up his own. They started with 300 hens and expanded slowly, applying biodynamic principles, so placing a strong emphasis on healthy soil and pasture, and using only feed grain that is grown without chemicals. Catham Springs now runs 4,000 layers in four mobile units and collects 2,000 to 2,500 eggs a day depending on the season. They've always referred to themselves as being free range egg producers, but feel recent changes to that term have watered down its value. While this is the sort of operation you might imagine when you buy eggs that are labelled free range, the reality has often been quite different. And there hasn't been a universally accepted definition of that term free range. Almost six years ago, a group of South Australian egg producers, including the Barras, started agitating for clarity at a state level. The issue soon progressed to the national stage. And in April this year, consumer affairs ministers from the Commonwealth, state and territories all came to a consensus on a new free range standard. But it's pretty fair to say, many of the smaller producers are still not happy. The new information standard will require eggs labelled as free range to have been laid by chickens that had meaningful and regular access to the outdoors and for them to have been stocked at no more than 10,000 hens per hectare. That's one chicken per square metre. The egg farmers that stock fewer chickens had lobbied hard for the approved density to be no more than 1,500 hens per hectare. 
We spent a lot of time on the phones, sending emails, talking to politicians, showing politicians around, just trying to get some clarity with what's going on and try and say that there are two different systems. There's the, the low of anybody that's stocking at 1,500 hens a hectare or less, and then anything above that really needs to be called something else. The recovery rate would be much better in the pasture. Yeah, correct. The owner of the Proof Licensing Program says the big industry players have taken the marketing advantage in using the free range term. They fought hard for the definition for free range. Um, in my opinion, they stole it from those that developed it and deserve to use it. One of the larger commercial producers who pushed for free range to be defined at the higher density was Dion Andari, who owns Day's Eggs. Currently we have four sheds with 30,000 bird capacity, so we're running 120,000 birds and uh, we're just about to put shed five in and we have planned for six sheds uh, approved. This is free range egg production at 10,000 chickens per hectare with fixed sheds. Any vegetation is eaten out pretty quickly and while the birds are free to come and go as they like. Ooh, wow, look at them all. Their pelletised feed and water is kept inside. And the chooks mostly opt to stay in the comfort of their climate controlled home. There certainly are a lot of them in here. I thought there were a lot outside, but there are a hell of a lot in here. Um, they, like, they, they go where they're comfortable. And uh, if they want to go outside, they will. It's about midday now, so more birds will come inside around the middle of the day. Dion Andari and his wife Anne started Day's Eggs in the late 80s. Back then, their laying hens were kept in cages. And Mr Andari maintains that is still best for the birds' welfare and productivity. There are several arguments mounted against free-range production. The chooks don't lay as many eggs over their lifetime. There is more land mass needed. Disease can be spread between wild birds and free-roaming chickens. And there is the issue of predators targeting the outdoor chooks. As an example, when a hawk flies overhead, the chickens scurry to the safety of their shed. For all these reasons, Day's Eggs was only pushed down the free-range path because consumers demanded it. That said, Dion Andari is pleased he'll be allowed to stock at 10,000 to the hectare, not be limited to 1,500. We'd already committed to large volume production. We were producing eggs and selling those eggs. And it would have meant that if the decision had gone the other way, the everyday consumer would have been paying a heck of a lot more for free-range eggs and most consumers would not have been able to afford to buy them. So that, that would have been something that would have been really detrimental to the general uh, national inventory of eggs and it would have created shortages even worse uh, than what we're probably seeing now. Also a director of Egg Farmers Australia, a body purporting to represent the interest of egg producers, Mr Andari takes issue with the term pastured eggs. Well, pastured, as long as it's not giving the perception that, that the birds are out there eating grass and that's where the eggs are coming from. The reason they're in grass is they're scratching around. They'll peck at grass and pull it to pieces and ingest some of it, but it, there's no nutritional benefit. That a chicken couldn't survive on grass, it would actually die. And, or it won't lay eggs anyway. It's a point that pastured egg producers dispute. While a supplied grain mix makes up the bulk of the chook's food intake, they say the chickens do eat grass. They eat a lot of grass, especially the first couple of days we move them onto fresh pasture. Um, we see it, they, they, they want to get into that clover straight away. Um, they're attracted to that. We see just under a third drop in consumption on our pelletised feed when we move them onto fresh pasture. So for the first couple of days, they are busy chasing bugs and and eating grass. Oh, they definitely eat the grass. They hammer the, the pasture down pretty hard sometimes. It's, that's why we have to keep them moving. And you notice that in the egg production, if they're eating the grass and they're on good, good pasture, that the egg production really increases. There has long been internal conflict within the egg industry between the big commercial players and the niche marketers. 
between those that believe chooks are best kept caged and others who want them to be free to roam and scratch. The Federal Treasury has been tasked with drawing up the new free-range information legislation and it's understood it'll be law within 12 months, with a phasing in period of another year or so. But if the definition was designed to bring consensus among producers, well clearly it hasn't. I think it's condemned free range to being just a supermarket term. Um, it, for some reason, the powers that be have decided that the supermarkets and the and the the corporate giants were more deserving of the term free range than our little family farms. Um, and in the process, they've um, destroyed destroyed the integrity of the term free range. Along with the terms pastured or pasture raised that are appearing on cartons, within the next two years it will become compulsory for producers to spell out the hen stocking density too. I'm not fearful of it at all because uh, the la one of the largest selling brands of uh, free range eggs in Australia has had 10,000 on their carton for almost four years and it, ha and it is still now the largest selling brand in Australia. So there's no question that there will be people that might make that switch, but there are also people that will go the other way and think, well, why am I paying that when I can actually get a cheaper product? You need to get a level playing field for consumers to be able to mm. compare mm. and the hectare ratio seems to be the one that, that we're getting them to understand. Um, it's a tricky one, but because I know plenty of people in the city have asked me, what is a hectare? So we haven't quite got that across. Hood's Earth Eggs were hurled a nice little marketing edge last year when Choice magazine rated them the top producer as defined by their low hen density. With no real barrier fences, Bill and Sal's chickens, as they like to call them, are stocked at less than 10 to the hectare a thousand times sparser than the new information standard will allow. Not that they think all producers should farm the way that they do. <laughs> no, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. I, I think there's room for all the, all the different types of production of eggs. Sure. Yeah, I, I don't no, I don't think so. And I don't think it's affordable for everybody to eat backyard eggs. It's perhaps not every farmer's dream job to be a pastured free-range <laughs> chook egg producer. Um, and and I, I don't know whether we would be able to produce enough eggs in this system to be able to feed the world. Put okay. it this way, five years ago if you said I'd be a chook farmer I wouldn't have taken you too seriously. <laughs> and I would have said, no way! <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, yeah, so no, I, 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 I think that there's room for everybody to do what they do.